As you probably know, c -sharp is a statically typed language. This means that variables have a clear and predefined type and that you can't change it on the fly. This is very helpful with type checking and safe data conversions, and it can help your ID warn you when you're feeding a variable of the wrong type somewhere. But did you know that you can actually take this type checking one step further by using c -sharp interfaces? Hello everyone, Mina here, and today I'm going to talk about a really cool c -sharp feature, the interfaces and how they can make your codebase more structured and easy to predict. So put on your c -sharp hat, get ready for some quick tips, and of course, don't forget to like and share the video if you enjoy it. In short, c -sharp interfaces are about defining the shape of a class, the fields it should have, the method it should define, and so on. You don't define the body of your functions or the value of your fields. In an interface, there are usually no actual definitions, only declarations. Then you can create classes that implement this interface. The idea is that by having the class derive from an interface, you make a deal with your fellow coders and the c -sharp compiler. Whatever property the interface declares, the class has to. Whatever function the interface declares, the class has and implements and whatever event or indexes the interface has, the class has. Note that beginning with c 8, interface function declarations may also have a body to provide the default implementation, as we'll see later on. Still, the most common use case for interfaces is to only declare the prototype and leave the actual implementation up to the class that derive from it. Interfaces are therefore an extremely powerful tool for codebase sanity and structuring. Since implementing an interface in a class forces you to tick all the boxes, as a developer you can assume things about the class and better predict its behavior. For your IDE, it will probably be helpful too. It will be able to list the available methods and fields that depend on this interface and provide you with lots of interesting info. And the IDE should even be able to tell you when you are missing fields or methods to properly fulfill the contract you made when you decided to implement the interface. Interfaces also help with data protection, aka encapsulation. When you code your interface, you can choose the type of accessor it uses, public, protected or private, and also whether the fields inside are read-only or read and write friendly. That's typically done with getters and setters like this. By the way, by default, interfaces are public, but you can easily change it as you would for a class just by adding the proper keyword in front of it. As with the C-sharp generics we talked about last time, interfaces are a good way to share behavior between multiple objects and therefore centralize your code in one place, which avoids redundancy and inconsistencies. Now, if you're a bit familiar with the grand OP patterns and paradigms, and in particular the ones defined in the very influential 1994 book Design Patterns by the Gang of Four, you might have noticed that interfaces are a great tool for designing composition over inheritance. The idea of composition is to rely on combining multiple independent components together on your objects to gradually build a multifaceted behavior, rather than having your object be the last child in a long chain of inherited classes. This frame of mind is oftentimes considered way more flexible than inheritance because you can more easily add and remove behavior, and you are less subjected to side effects from parent classes. For example, that's how lots of game engines work. In Unity or Unreal Engine, you have some base game object to which you add a lot of components to gradually boost its capacities. So roughly put, this paradigm has grown on people because it nicely decouples features and better separates concerns. Okay, so to understand how we can use interfaces in C-sharp, let's look at a simple example, a basic RPG game hero system. Suppose you're tasked with designing a small RPG game, and the first feature on the list is the creation of heroes. In this fantasy world, heavily inspired by Tolkien, there are three races available. Humans, Elves and Dwarves. Then for each of these races, the player can pick one class among four. Warrior, Hunter, Mage or Thief. This gives a total of 12 combinations. For example, a hero could be a human mage or an elf thief. There are plenty of ways of creating such a system. 
But here, interfaces can come in handy because they will help with modularity. In our case, race and class are currently completely unrelated, so we can consider each property on its own and work on them separately. Then, thanks to interfaces, we'll be able to apply both contracts to our heroes and make sure they implement both properly. This will be a direct application of design by composition. First, let's create some static data about our races and classes. For the races, we have a set of stats, and for the classes, we have the name of the base power heroes will have when they start their journey. This data is fixed and decided once and for all by developers. When the game runs, we simply read it and show it in various ways. We won't modify it. In this example, actually, we'll just print some of it in the console. Now it's time to write our interfaces. For the race property, we'll make an iHeroRace interface that simply defines the hero race field itself and an output function that is used to print info on the racial abilities, print race information. Be careful that this function is not defined in the interface. It must be filled later on when we create our class that derives from this interface. Also, the i prefix at the start of i hero race is a very common practice in C Sharp. Similarly, for the hero class property, we can code up an i hero class interface with a field for the hero's class and a direct getter for the base power. Since I'm using C Sharp 8 Plus here, I can even define a default implementation for the getter. Finally, we simply need to create our hero class that derives from both these interfaces. It's a perfectly classic C Sharp class, meaning that we can also have additional fields and methods that don't come from any interface. Here, the hero's name and the print base information function. But of course, we need to implement the function required by the iHero race interface that has no default implementation. And we should use the constructor to fill in our various fields. And here we are, we can now use our class like this to create a whole bunch of heroes with various races and classes. And the great thing is that if I change something in the interface, for example, if I rename my print race information method, then I won't be able to compile and ship my program until all the classes that use this interface have been updated too. If you program games in Unity and C Sharp, there is another very common application of interfaces, the UI elements callback functions. Oftentimes, you'll have some button or frame that you'd like to be able to click on to perform an action. Or you could want to add a hoover and hoover logic that changes the element's color while the mouse is over it. All of this is doable via script using some of Unity's built-in UI interfaces. iPointer enter handler, iPointer exit handler, iPointer click handler, etc. For example, the following snippet of code can be applied on any object in a Unity scene that has a Unity engine.ui.image component on it to tint it red when hovered. To sum up, C Sharp interfaces are extremely useful for code based structure. They allow your team and tools to know what to expect and what to assume about the custom objects that you're handling. Using interfaces usually pushes you to think in the composition over inheritance way, meaning that your classes are assemblies of small independent systems that all coexist, instead of being yet another derivative of a base abstract class. And that's it for today. So I hope you enjoyed this new short format video, and of course don't hesitate to leave a comment with your ideas for other dev tutorials and quick tip videos. As usual, thank you for watching, and see you soon for more videos on coding and games.